So um, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. So I have Naila Banks here, and I have Jasmine, Tony, and Ashley Townsend Daniels. I might have said it uh, backwards, but Daniels Townsend. Anyway, these young women are fabulous, and we just want to kind of chime in or clap back on some things that we see going on. And it's not to be a part of um, the rhetoric or um, the situation, uh, just to give our own opinions of a, a, a young woman that has put her uh, judgment on uh, George Floyd's situation and uh, begin to talk about the fact that he had drugs in his system. I just think that it's inhumane for a person such as, let's just say her name, Candace Owens, to support someone and people that have had corruption in their life. You could look it up. Donald Trump, no pers nothing personal. I love his bu business ethics. But what I don't like as a black woman is that I have three sons and I would be in a situation like that or like Trayvon Martin mom and some, a young woman that has the same color as me comes onto the media and, and, and opposes or puts her opinion in such a fact that she thinks anyone matters or that it matters, that she does not support them uh, creating him as a martyr. Who cares what you think, number one? Because you are only one person. You have a lot of people that are following you, but that doesn't mean anything. When people really begin to look at electoral system, Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, and, and, and the liberals, what they'll find is, is that they are all in a social gathering. When they come from uh, media, they're sitting at the table eating together. Now, do your homework. That means that. Okay, when you look her up, you're going to find that she was a Republican. Now she's a conservative. Mm -hmm. I, I like for people to research for themselves. What got me upset is, is that how you have the audacity to come and smear somebody's memory. Your old daughter, and then he also has family members. They're in pain. People that are standing for the protest have been triggered. It's been a long time coming. My son asked me, what you think about this? I said, it's been a long time coming. I was born in 64. All of the planets lined up according to the time and the destruction came because time repeats itself. Number one, to bring a change. The one thing about bringing the change is, is that some of us don't listen. So we prepare folks, such as y'all as young women, to begin to speak out. I'm an older woman, 55. You know, my tenure is almost done, but I'm imparting information that many people would say is crazy. Number one, have you ever looked at where the electoral system started and who created it? The next thing is, is that when a politician comes on and they're speaking against someone that has transitioned, there's a problem. Listen, if you can condemn and judge others, then you got some issues you're going to have to face because no one is perfect. This is my thing, okay? The other thing is, is that the martyr. Do you understand that Paul in the Bible was a martyr? Because he killed Christians. His transition brought him into a place where he was walking in what he did. No matter if the man has been called a martyr, the problem is how do you come off taking away his memory and putting your mouth on it in leadership? I ain't even got to talk about the fact that you're the same color. We, all, we already understand there's an identity issue. We got people that understand that collectively we want to come together and uh, eliminate race. We don't want we don't want racism. We want equality for all people. That means that we want unity. I remember reading and I saw the house niggas because they wanted a position, and so the house nigger will speak against his own people. Wherever you came from and whatever you become, the number one thing is, is that 
there is the rich and the poor. And the whole thing with these people in the political arena is to shovel out or push out people that are underprivileged. I got some information for you, so I will put it in all of the communities that I have. But it's time to talk back to people that are trying to defame other folks when they're dying of crimes that are of supremacy, white supremacy. This could be a balanced kind of situation. You, you wouldn't even have to say white and black if people would stop labeling one, one another and judging them. The other thing that I want to address, and I'm gonna give these young women the floor is, when people are looking at why, why now? Why George Floyd's death tipped it off? The reason why is sin has to have its way. Do you know that when a person starts off doing something, if it's crooked, even your political leaders that have had crooked situations, they tend to stay in the crookedness until they are exposed. Sin has its way. This is a time that was coming up to a breaking of rage of people that have not had a way to speak out and to voice their opinion about their kinsmen being killed. Like, um, Trayvon Martin's mother. You know, I, I looked at the video on her, God bless her and the stand that she's taken, she supports them. You know, anybody could go to uh, YouTube and look at the video. She's even uh, uh, running for office in, in Florida. The thing is, is that you don't deflect from the problem because you want to be seen and supported by the people that you think can get you there. People have selfish motives. It's all about get me where I need to get to. Maybe you were rejected as a child in some kind of way. And so you took up the stand and you just want to put in, in, in place the fact that you're accepted by some people that have the money all of the time throughout the birthing of the United States. That's what this is all about. The way. Native Americans have not even came out and said a word about this land. I'm waiting for them and I support them because all of this was under trickery and thievery. Now, when sin has had its way, the Bible says that it will bring the repercussions. American leaders from the beginning of time they set this country up to support them, not to support the people. People are looking for leaders that will lead them. If I give you an orange and, and I'm a leader in the political arena, you're going to take it and be satisfied with that? It's time to wake up. I don't want an orange. I want an orange robe or two. Why? Because I feel like I deserve it. But then if I didn't get that, if I didn't work towards it, see, I don't have an entitled uh, uh, mentality. I've worked for things. If I don't get it and most people are saying, then, you know, I'm going to get enraged. That's why we need leaders. Leaders that identify with who we are, such as Malcolm. They trained men. And I don't care that he was with the, the Nation of Islam. What I do care about is that those men had a level of respect. And when they came out, they was put together. They was put together inside out. They weren't showing just their faces. Because he went through an in-depth transformation when he was in jail. And then when he found out the things that he did about the nation, but he didn't stop or change or go back to where he worked, he continued and then he began to e embrace equality. Why was he doing all of this? He's seen the change of, of, of the times concerning what he had grew up in, how he had sold drugs. He transformed his life on two levels. Before he died, 
He came out of racism before he died, when he went to, to Mecca. But this is the ultimate thing, but it's not to sell your people out. To teach your people and encourage them to come together and teach one another. That's what it's all about. It bothers me to see people uh, of color looking back. You was the one that took the, 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 the pig slops to the, the people that was working in, in the field. Master gave me this. I, listen, the time of Master is over. You got the ability to choose your destiny. This is where we at. And so with Candace Owens' opinion of George Floyd, and she does not support him being a martyr, who asked you anyway? Okay, you guys, what you got? Y'all, come on. I know you're reflecting. It's a hard time right now. It really is. But it's also a time that mouths are beginning to open, not on a stupid level. Some people are going to be out in the streets protesting, but some people are going to be speaking out, and they're going to be saying, okay, we got, we, we got, you know, a brotherhood here. If you got something you want to say, feel like you can connect with us so that you can get your opinion out. And you may not have an opinion, but you want to know that you can find a support group that will help you through the changing times because the protesting and the radicalness is not going to change now. It's going to be going on for a while until political leaders and policies change that will suit everyone. When you look at white supremacists, let me just back up because I'm ahead of myself. When you look at police, and I wrote on that in I Am a Woman of Power on Facebook. When you look at police, not even of color, just police, period, that have taken on the idea that they could kill people. They have no kind of process of using the training that they did, maybe even in, six, in the 60s or the 70s. What that tells me is that leadership has allowed them or told them or showed them that they could do something to a people. And it's not just the black people that it's happening to. Because see, I like to do my research. Statistics do show you that there was more whites that have been situated by police antagonism. However, why is the, the rush of rage coming up for people of color, black people? I don't want to uh, insult us. Uh, why is it coming up? Centuries of oppression. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Centuries of silence. Centuries of fear to speak your mind. This here, this fear of speaking has went across so many domains of our lives, even into our households, with our families, with husbands and wives, and it has cut up our family. What is at the root of it? To dominate. To dominate who? And keep a people down that have already been oppressed. I mean, it's more to it, but to, to bring it to the forefront and then take out topics where people will begin to actually think for themselves and look and study, that is, that, that's the, the main focus. You don't have to just listen to people and, and take their word for it. You need to study and show yourself approved and also find your feelings in the time. I agree. Um, it's funny you mentioned that because when you were talking earlier, I wrote something down that was coming to me and I said, you know, we as um, a society are in a narcissistic relationship with and are being gaslighted by the, the structures, the powers that be. And I said, you know, and I was thinking about that and I said, you know, why do we get stuck in that paradigm? I think it's because we our pain body we a lot of people are still addicted to pain in their pain bodies and um i think once you 
become, you know, come to an awareness of who you are. You don't look towards the media or the masses to dictate how you should think, how you should feel, which way you should go. You have to, you know, come to those realizations on your own. Um, and as you said, we are in a position right now where we have the opportunity, um, which I'm grateful for, to choose our destiny. The structures and the things that have been in place are all coming down. And um, now is our time, like, as you said, to speak out, to speak up and to, uh, again, to kind of like you said, to connect to people who, who have not been heard, but have something to say. So, yeah. yeah. Ashley and Jan. Um, I found interesting about this that um, my favorite author being Toni Morrison, I was watching her um, documentary yesterday and she said that she wanted to speak about the identity of the black people the black and give the black voice without the identification in the dominating aspect of the white and that she was ridiculed for it initially especially when she wrote her book Sula because she didn't speak about or have the voice of what whites thought about black people and so much of our identity as a culture, as a race, not just Blacks, but minorities overall, is how whites and the dominant <clears throat> individuals in our society view us. If they view us as less than, then we adopt that mentality and focus on it. The only okay, way we right can get there. ahead. Let me, let me ask you to go further on that, because when, um, when you look at the fact that how a white person looks at me, um, and I may be actually weak, weak within my confidence or constitution, well, what is that going to do for you? Because that's a powerful thing, and that's what I see here with her. How it's going to lower your self-worth. Like you're going to take on, you, it's going to lower your self-worth. You're going to take on what they think of you. Like, they're gonna, you're going to take on what they say you should be or how you should act or what you should say and how you should feel and how you should think it's going to like it's basically they're basically going to become the puppeteer in a way mm -hmm. okay. and okay Go ahead. and you know, and you know i when i started reading because i didn't watch the news so i didn't even know who candace was so i kind of did right. quick research before this call but um <clears throat> when i was reading what she said, I, I had to take a step back because for me, the only way you could quantify the value of someone's life to be worthy or, or not is based off of judgment is if you judge yourself. So I had to have compassion for this woman because she is struggling inside of herself. She doesn't know who she is and is projecting that outwardly. I mean, how could you, how could you judge someone's life based off of your opinions, your, your perceptions, your judgments, because you judge yourself. She, she, you know, that's the only, that's opposite of love. So <laughs> the only way you can come from that perspective is you hate yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to yourself. add on to what you said, it also adds on to what the, what society and the media does when there is a police brutality incident concerning a person of color or a black person. They always demonize and uh, demonize the victim, which mm -hmm. is it, which is always the case with with Trayvon Martin. He was suspicious and he was walking home in a hoodie you know, in Florida with um, Ahmad Ashbery. He was looking in to the where the developers uh, place or looking in where they were building the homes which is normal and as right. they said in the news a whole bunch of people have done that like if you see yes. a structure like oh this looks nice i want to see how they're building this house it doesn't mean that he is a criminal it doesn't mean that any of them are a criminal and even if they were a criminal in the past who are you who are you to be judge jury and, and execute an executioner you're not what? Well, and that's where the gaslighting comes in. We are, we have been in an abusive relationship with America for centuries. Mm -hmm. And they will have you to believe that 
um, we are the victims. They want to keep you in victim mentality so that right. you stay oppressed. But we are not victims. We're not. That's just what we, the programming. But once you come to the realization of who you are, then you come out of that paradigm of, of that, that, that gauntlet, you know? Right. You come out of the paradigm and you be, you begin to expose the lies, the controversies mm -hmm. that are put in the media. And when people are defaming, it doesn't matter what you did in life. What matters is, is that you let people have a memorial of an individual rather than you coming in and having to get the limelight shined on you. So mm -hmm. we see people and we see where the feeding is. You know, uh, when we go back to the views and how I should look, what I see is um, even our people at a certain point in time, not even knowing, but subconsciously having taken on the idea that they have to look like something other than themselves. And then we had the people coming in, sisters and brothers, and they would take on their heritage again mm -hmm. of not straight hair. And yeah, I have straight hair, but that's my preference. It's not because I don't know who I am. Uh, I know who I am, and that speaks volumes through my conversation. The point is, is that whenever you deflect from a problem, it's a problem that you have. The number mm -hmm. one thing is that you want the focus to be on you, so you're giving information to the masses that can keep them confused. And that's where, you know, people uh, that are conclusively steadfast understanding their position in life come in and say, no, we don't want you to take that away from his family. We have a six-year-old daughter and there's something else going on with you that you actually, you care that anybody thinks uh, that you're supporting his martyrdom. What people want is the brutality to end. The, the brutality, when I go back, it did not start with the police. It's in leadership. That means that the court system is out of order. Also, uh, let, let's just say the judges, the, the, the attorneys, U.S. attorneys, Aubrey's situation was closed until someone had a conscience that was in, I think, uh, the, uh, the general attorneys or um, U.S. anyway, a higher up attorney situation. And that's when uh, those, that father and mother, a uh, father and, and son were actually arrested because they had shut it in February. They went back, someone went back and they couldn't deal with their conscience that was in uh, the office of, maybe it was the general attorneys or something like that. And they had worked with uh, the man that uh, killed him. And this is when they turned in the information. So when you deflect and you're saying that you don't agree, it, it doesn't matter because your opinion is not based on the facts that are going on right now, which is that numerous black men have been killed. And no one in the court system, this is the fact of the matter, no one in the court system stands up for them. It don't matter what they did. Judgment is not in a political system's hand. It is up to the supreme being. It is up to God. It is not up to you, Candace Owen, and anybody else that bring the matter of the fact that he was on drugs. You just bringing that in brought judgment on yourself. Mm -hmm. Someone asked you mm -hmm. for that opinion. Mm -hmm. You took the, the opportunity and you shifted the interest, although it's not stopping anything. And I want to say something else, because you said that the people, isn't it funny how during election, things like this come up? This is not word verbatim, but it's on uh, Google. You guys can look it up, how things shift. And it's like she's saying how it twisted because of all of the camaraderie. Yeah, every time that there's an election, there's an upheaval of something. You can go back in history and look at that. But why is it happening? The, <coughs> the 
the person that operates out of the ego could never ever meet with a conversation that we're having because they hadn't went deep to find out really what they're looking for. Most of your persons are looking for flamboyancy, material. They want to be seen. And listen, I'm going to give it to her though. She's a fabulous communicator. Mm -hmm. She is. She is. She is. She does. You ain't got to change it. The communication does not set the standard for people that are in need, but then, you know, I'll fall back or mm -hmm. I'll digress and say, I know that you're not for the people because anybody that is standing with political leaders are not for the people. They're for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is very important for people to look at all of history and say, yes, they gave me an orange. Yes, they, they, they created a welfare system that, yes, they did. But what did it do for you? Now, this is not for people that don't want to work right. or, you know, put in their part. This is for people that really understand that you do have to do your part in, in this society. When you come back from this thought and you look at how far you came, then you can do some observation about the political system. The person that has never worked can tend to be an opportunist, entitled, they won't see it, but it's there because they've been used to people giving them things. So let's just break that up right now. You are not in a place or a life just to be given. We all reciprocate in this here life. The circle of life it unifies and it goes around like this. It's no disconnect. What disconnects you is that when you don't understand your part in this world, so to speak, like you all giving your voice, sharing what you see here. I'm not protesting against her. She can go on and do what she wants to, but we have an opinion to speak about someone and time that we have been looking at ourselves that need to change according to the justice system. Mm -hmm. The justice system has, it has oppressed people so that there are men and women that owe child support that cannot drive. Fines that have added up. And, and you know, someone like, like this here we're talking about, they'll say, well, you know, that's their fault. Listen, education goes a long way. My people perish, yes they do, because they don't have leaders that's telling them how to overcome the mistakes they made. I don't know nobody that ain't made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me neither. I make, yeah. I still make them. And because you make mistakes, you're given the opportunity to relearn how to do it over. But a lot of people are not, they're not guided on the fact that, yeah, you keep going back to that wall and it's just bouncing you because it's not the way. Mm -hmm. So if we get more leaders, more women, in this here case, I, I pray for the men to, to stand up because there's no leaders like Malcolm again. There, mm -hmm. you know, when you go on, you got these leaders, uh, Al Sharpton and some of the other ones, and but you can't find them um, doing the work continuously to cut down the, the supremacy issues in the, the, the judgment seat or in the court system because a judge is allowing, in most cases, a person to go to jail that did not deserve to go to jail or orchestrating uh, laws where if you have a certain amount of weed that you go into jail for what, 10 or 15 years? Mm -hmm. And who <coughs> is it affecting? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the police yeah. didn't just learn and take to do this. They've seen something within the system uh, that mm -hmm. they work in, leadership, that told them they could do it. Mm -hmm. Or how they're calling the opioid an epidemic because uh, the crack and uh, war on drugs. <coughs> right. Right. And there's centers to safe havens for, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's safe havens for a lot of 
um, meth users to go into communities and safely use their drugs without being bothered, without I being arrested. That. West wow. Virginia, yeah. Wow. We have I just wanted to um, <laughs> piggyback on something about Candace Owens. I, I knew nothing about her, so I wanted to do some research. Not that Wikipedia is the best place to go to, but they have some information. So it, it was interesting when I read that in her early life, um, when she was a senior in high school, she received three racist death threats. So for a person to come from a predicament of receiving racist death threats, pursuing it, suing the Board of Education for not protecting her, and then to become someone who then ridicules the very people who she, in a sense, was attempting to protect when, by protecting herself, it, it confuses me. And then it shows me that she herself has to be confused. She herself has to mm -hmm. question her identity and realize that the way that she's going to get ahead is to align herself with people who then she even later on in her life actively spoke out against. So it's almost like you would rather align yourself with the people who demoralize you and, and demoralize other minorities than to take a different path. It's, it's the wow. energy. She's feeding off the energy that she's getting from it, whether it's positive mm -hmm. or negative, she's feeding off that energy. Um, I read something also about how she was um, speaking about someone who um, wasn't paying their, could, uh, couldn't pay their mortgage or something to live in a particular neighborhood, but yet she w didn't pay her rent for six months and was evicted. So she did, did the same thing and also, jumping from one political party to the next. It's, it's just like wherever the wind blows and wherever she can get that attention, that's, that's the it. where she's going to go to, to get fed from that. So, you know, right now, and then of course her, her messages are going viral because it's promoting separatism. So, mm -hmm. and that's, and that's where they want us to stay and separate it. And, and we see it, you know, playing out as outwardly separated, but if you really take it up to another level, it's really inner separation. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and, and then inner separation to a population uh, that you are actually um, sent into. And, you know, I, I just want to mm -hmm. say, you know, I, my, my views have nothing to do with attacking her personally, but her stand and where she came from with it. Uh, the, you know, that she is a phenomenal speaker, but yes. the contradiction of her um, background as far as how she's lived and how you come forward to judge others is like um, part of a political uh, leaders, that's the way that they form the rally. I'm sure that they're setting her up for political leadership, but here is where it is. If you continue to elect the same people, same personality, the same mindset, how are you going to get a change? Because not. the change... You won't. No, you won't. So the change right here is showing you through protesting that there is great possibility. This happened in the 60, um, 67, 68, you know, um, this all was building up from JFK's death. It was building up from um, Malcolm marching the uh, inequality. And the inequality, again, is not just about, for me, it's not just about Blacks. Of course, I've seen um, um, the anger that I, I wore just identifying with it in my awakening. But I, I, I moved on and I said, well, where is the balance? And the balance is to focus on the people. You can't just jump from one place to another. That means that you're observing yourself and saying, what, what, what have you taken in mentally that has programmed you to feel the anger? Mm -hmm. I, I need to feel angry about a population being oppressed and beat down, such as the way that ours was, right? Then when you mm -hmm. go on, I did say, all races have been in slavery. But the thing is, is that it is documented. And so it needs to be heard that Black Americans were the most savagely beaten. <laughs> Archived information and 
and the Smithsonian uh, online information. I'm sure that people have heard this before. So to go from anger to acceptance means that if you got angry about what has happened in the past and people will say, well, what's in the past is in the past. Listen, what's in the past, it is in the past. But baby, if you don't address the past, that's just like your own demons coming to haunt you. Mm -hmm. It'll come back. Right. Yep. A person that was raped, oftentimes they won't address it and they <laughs> lose their minds, they lose their, their lives completely because they don't address what they're feeling in the inner man. Mm -hmm. The inner spirit has to be dealt with. And here you, you see someone that is totally about outside external. No, we have to go within ourselves to begin to bridge the gap of balance. Some people ain't worried about balance. They just mm -hmm. understand what they want. Notoriety, money, and attention. Those are not the people to follow because they're not going to get you anything. You've got to set up the, the, the time is calling for groups. You know, you go back to the Bible and it showed you 12 tribes. For what? Why 12? Because they would be able to build a foundation, one, two equals three, to support their community. What is a community? People that come together. And many people might listen and say, well, where's the community? It starts right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. You cannot be an external person without <laughs> visiting your internal. When you visit your internal, it's going to cause you to visit your maternal. Mm -hmm. You can avoid looking at the past and history, but if you don't look at history, you will never ever begin to write your own story, that's our right. story. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that, right. that's, that's where I was you know, today. I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe, I can't believe someone with such a powerful speaking ability mm -hmm. to turn this around to her. You could have went and supported the family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when when you talk about um, addressing our past, you know, a lot of people think that that just starts with your mother and your father. No, we have within our DNA ancestors and the traumas that they've gone through and experienced all of that has to be dealt with you have to know those things you have to face those things in order to move forward otherwise you know you will look at a person like candace and if you're not sure of who you are you you might think the way she does you know so mm -hmm. and think that that's okay to dehumanize someone not and not and judge them and I mean, where's the compassion in that? There is none. I think to get rid of all of this, you have to deal with the myths, the myths that you need to get over slavery. No, we don't need to get over slavery. We need to deal yes. with it. We need to heal from it. But not only that, we have slavery, then we have segregation, and then we have the Jim Crow laws, and then we have this time where we're, there's still, we're still being oppressed. People of color are still being oppressed. The over policing of black and brown communities. Like in New York with the stop and frisk. The annual report it says six thousand six hundred and eighty-five thousand people were stopped. Nearly nine out of the ten people were innocent that they stopped. And 2019, 13,459 people were stopped. 8,867 people, which is 66% were innocent, 7,981 were black, 3,869 people were Latino, and only 1,215 were white. Mm -hmm. And that was under the Bloomberg administration, which is a Democrat. So people have to understand that these parties, these political parties are only out for themselves. I agree with you. And, and I think um, we have to talk about how, yeah, it's a right now we see it well the the media is projecting it as a black and white thing and and us being segregated but you also have to take it to a different perspective and and see that within our own communities there's segregation yes. um yes. you know that's something that was um 
taught to us yeah. between mm -hmm. those being in the house versus those being in the fields. There was a hierarchy of who was better than the other when the fact of the matter is that we're all oppressed. Right. Yep. We're all oppressed. So until mm -hmm. you deal with the trauma of the mind control of that, then you're going to keep perpetuating the same behaviors over and over and over again. Exactly. And another thing that we have to think about as well is that it's not just a black white issue. It's a green issue. It's a money issue. Yes. Yeah. So yes, systematically, definitely. systematically, we've been put in a predicament to be oppressed, whether we're black, white, purple, green, mm -hmm. we're oppressed. Once you hit a certain level of green, that oppression changes because suddenly yes. we can That's praise right. you because you have the money and mm -hmm. you can yeah. do things, but then we still dictate where you can go, what you can do, how you can do it, and what you can say. Mm -hmm. So realistically, we're in a system that we just keep going, oh, another Black person died and we're upset. Let's vote for different people. It's not the voting that's going to make the difference. It's, it's the system. system in of itself that needs to be deconstructed yeah, to really yeah. change it. And that's the history that we really need to look into. That's the information that we really need to address. So while I stand with my people of color who are upset and frustrated, it's not about getting out to the polls. It's not about changing who we're voting for because these people are still aligning themselves with political parties that right. don't care about you going to make your vote. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and just to piggyback off of what you said uh, earlier, Kim, where it comes to we have to build communities, like why we've been trying to align ourselves with this pseudo community that has been uh, built up for us to want to be a part of. Why? Why do we want to be a part of that? We, we can establish our own communi communities like we need to stop trying to align with that structure that was um created for us to align to that was not in support of us and not yeah, a part guess. not equality for everyone so i don't think we i think we just need to disengage from yeah, the you system. Have to, um i believe disengage is um necessary so that you can begin <laughs> to clear from the programming and yes. then once you're clear of the programming you will feel the the rush of what you should be doing, speaking, walking, talking, whatever uh, part you play in it. And after you begin to position with the people that are walking, talking, wherever it fits with you, like I know that you guys are communicators. So I called you and I know your spiritual stance on things. I also know where you're gonna go with it because I know the, the, the background. And that means to educate women and men and allow them to make decisions based on the information not being subjective just simply being you do have a part to play in this somebody made you feel like you didn't this is the time to add your voice this is also the time to begin to deal with trust issues why don't we trust each other? Because we were set up against each other, even in the, the field, the levels of our community as the house nigga. I said it. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so in your communities, what you have is, yes, people that are oppressed and they're tearing down, and they have some that are looking down on them, not seeing that there's, there's an answer. To their problems is a question being asked is unknown it's not being said why do i have to live like this why was i born like this when i look at why i got an answer to the question but everybody does not have the mindset to answer the question they need to be taught why my why did that that question that's been answered in the last week is that there are people that are born poor and they don't understand that they have the ability to rise above the changes, but they are caught up in a system that needs to be broken, which is why we have been in so many different dilemmas with Coronado, I call it Coronado. Some people don't, don't want to sit down and be still. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Because Absolutely. if you sit down and be still, you ain't going to be doing what they taught you to do. You're going to be working, by the way. Did you know that? And then, oh, I don't have a problem with you working. But maybe if you sat down and you were still, you would know that God had something better than you, better for you. If you're sitting at home and you are just taking on welfare, God has something better for you. How do I know? Everybody comes here with a purpose. They choose to be either an external impression of who they are to keep cycles going the same way with their families, or they choose to get mad like somebody like us and say mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. They choose. It's your choice. Yeah. Yeah, I think people not even it's not just a black or white thing because if yeah. you look at it, if you look at America, when Italians came over here, they were treated poorly until they started treating black people poorly. When Greeks came over, they were treated poorly until they started treating black people poorly. When the Asians came over, they made them build the railroads on the West Coast. Like, they were basically slaves. And then they were put in concentration camp, camp during a war. Until so they started treating Black people poorly. It's a divide and conquer mentality. It is. And it's not, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with um, race. It's, well, partially it does, but it's a, like Ashley said, it's a war on green. The only color they're worried about is about green. Money. Yeah. yeah. It's the rich versus the poor. And right. Why do you think, like, my whole thing is, why do you think the Fred Hamptons, or the Fred Hampton was taken out, taken out the way he was? Why do you think Malcolm X was taken out the way he was taken out? Because they were teaching people, we don't care what color you are. We all need to come together and build our own. And what happened? They were taken out. Right. And, and interestingly enough, what we also have to recognize is that it's not a war on race because there are no different races. Right. We are all the human race. It is a war on color. Mm -hmm. um, in college, I took a course about how in other cultures, the people of darker skin are deemed less. But that does not mean that that person cannot rise to be the highest person in, in society. It just means that because they are of darker skin, they are looked at as less. Mm -hmm. The difference that we've done in America is that we are of darker skin and somehow we adopted the mentality that because we're darker, we are also lesser, and that to get where we need to go, we have to attack our fellow man. When you look at how the Spanish come, they buy one house, they all live in the house, they all contribute, and then build a business and grow and advance. I'll tell you here, um, I live in New Jersey in Plainfield, and I have watched our downtown come from being owned by Caucasians, to Asians. Now every other store has a Spanish name that I can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. And they are, they build their community. That's right. As African Americans, we need to do the same. We need to stop looking at our fellow man as someone we need to attack as more so as someone, how can I help you? How can I support you? How can I lend a hand, helping hand? Mm -hmm. How can I promote your business and how can you right. promote mine? Like look at the, as well as the Asian community, they exactly. do the same thing. And then they, pay for their other family members to come over but it's right. not the same here it's not and it's it's like a the crab in a barrel mentality and it shouldn't be that way right so we have to yeah. we have to wake up and um also um you know allow people even in you know the group on on facebook um youtube you know my promoting of, of women has nothing to do with women um, that are beating up men it is to help women understand their place in this world and uh, that's another topic but it's very important because uh, women would not be in the situations that they are sometimes having lesser uh, women's lib was another um, vice and so we that's another thing we can talk about another time but to know it was a vice means that there was a certain population of people that fed into it, and then it put our men in uh, prison. Uh, it put them in um, um, separated homes. And I'm not saying that it was just 
the women, but women fed into uh, the, the independent woman. And you can be independent and you, you marry. You, you don't have to be separated to uh, gain uh, independence. And that, those are things that, you know, the women, I feel like being an older woman, getting uh, back to the place where we teach our women, and of course it's those that want to learn, that mm -hmm. we have a place. There is the patriarch and the matriarch. And as you believe in yourself, that wholeness becomes who you are, the matriarch and the patriarch. That oneness of who you are, it brings you into a place of wholeness where you don't see differences in color or in men or sliding. Yet there's a love that is perpetuated through wholeness. And, and that's what we really have to give back to. Because at one point, it was that. And the world has went through all different kinds of changes to be and to have. And it's all going to wind up being meaningless. The best yeah. thing you can do is to teach a soul how to transform from nothing to something. The person that is on <coughs> welfare, we're not beating them up because I was there. You know, when I was younger, having a son uh, at, at 19 years old, my experience, it spoke to me and said, yeah, I don't want nobody to give me nothing, especially them, especially when I'm in an office and the lady said, okay, so what you gonna do too? You just gonna live off of, no, I'm not. Y'all don't pay me enough. I'm like, I like, at that time, I like money. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get it twisted. So this is a mindset that when someone is giving you something you don't want to sit there and take it because it's just not enough you you want to get up and find out what your purpose is that's going to settle the score of anger in these mm -hmm. uh, impoverished <coughs> communities a lot of people are frustrated because no one has taught them anything or taught them how to get it listen going to the schools ain't gonna do it it's a fact that when we were uh, teaching our own people that we were going to college and getting PhD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and before. Because they understood the privilege of learning. Mm -hmm. It's no privilege to learn now to our children. Mm -hmm. But it's because we're, we're, we, we, we put them in a system and no one has even shined a light on the fact that segregation or, um, you know, integration was no good. No, not at all. The worst thing that could have happened. <clears throat> and, you know, you mentioned earlier about people adding their voice. I think before people can really add a voice, they have to find their voice. That's true. And yes. I, I don't think that, you know, people even know what that means. If, if, if you, you, and that's what goes back to what I said about disengaging. You have to disengage and, and go within to find mm -hmm. out who you are and, and what, what you think, how you feel about every, anything, everything, before you can even have a voice to, to, to give. Um, so I think, um, like you said, it's, it's connected to your purpose. But the only way to find that information is to disengage and to go within. You're not going to find it by watching CNN. You're not going to watch it by <laughs> listening to Facts. what your friends are saying. I, you know, I find so many, so often, you know, people who post to Facebook, they're posting ideas that they got from someone else. It's not even what they think. They're, they're just attaching themselves themselves to an opinion <clears throat> that is not even an original opinion. They haven't even asked themselves, what do I really think about this? You know, a lot of it is just rhetoric that they're just, you know, regurgitating information. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I think, again, sorry, not to cut you off, but I think people who do voice their truth and stand in their truth, like Colin Kaepernick with the whole protest, they're yeah. attacked because people yeah. don't know. That's not, that's not what we told you to do. It's not it's like, they're like, whoa, what are you doing? You're it's standing unpopular. up for yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then, they use that 
as another means to, oh, well, he's attacking our country, he's attacking our flag, he's attacking our vets. Well, did you know that majority of the veterans make up the homeless pop population? What are you doing <laughs> about that since you care so much about the vets or veterans? But that's the thing I think we focus so much on or had been people have been focusing so much on what other people think. What, right. what should have happened when Kaepernick came out is that the all of the, the celebrities that look like him, that came from the same background as him, that can understand mm -hmm. him, should have rallied re behind him and mm -hmm. and supported him and not forget your paycheck. You should have disengaged yes. from those organizations. Uh that were perpetuating yes. this type yes. of behavior. That's where you yes. went wrong. But, the, that, but we didn't do that. We didn't use our celebrity, our influence in those ways. So I had know. a debate with somebody on Facebook about that. And she was like, well, I feel like he's attacking our flag <laughs> and our country. It's and not even your flag. And I was, like, I was like, okay, well, do you know when slavery was abolished? And she was like, no. I was like, well, do you know when the national anthem was written? She was like, no. So I told her the national slavery ended. It was um, the proclamation was on January 1st, 1863. The Star Spangled Banner was written on September 14th, 1814. Black yeah. people were still considered slaves when the Star Spangled Banner was written. So the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, didn't include black people. So, right. and not even, a, not only that, look about, look at the wars. The black people were sent to fight the wars, the Revolutionary War, World War One, World War Two, the Vietnam War, the Korean War. They, they were sent there and they were being killed there by their own people or being, yeah. or coming back home and being treated less than, than that. So of course a black person won't have that same pride as a white person because for us that flag doesn't mean anything. Right, I and, I, and I guess, to, not to interrupt, but I wanted to piggyback on what you said about um, how everyone should have rallied behind Colin. Agree, but I think that the, the biggest thing that needed to happen was the people who decided to attack him, mm -hmm. instead of attacking him, ask him why. Yep. Pause oh, for a second sure. and ask not just him why, but also ask yourself why. Why is this bothering me so much? Because yeah. the moment you get to the root of why does it bother you that a man decides to take a knee that's his prerogative that's how he decided to protest how he decided to use his voice why does him using his voice bother you what what is, because what, they didn't give him permission to. and how dare asked, he think exactly how he dare he think that he can go against what what we've given him we've allowed you this much how dare you try to get more mm -hmm. or how dare you you know so Whoa. that's why wow that's why well, we have to uh, get together and do this again, and y'all have to um, set your um, intention of what you want to talk about uh, to educate the, um, the public and those that want to hear our uh, point of view. And it's not our point of view to put it in a place where you have to believe what I'm saying. This It's about education. It's not about just listening and taking people's uh decision or what they think anymore. It's about deprogramming and getting your own opinion of who you are, what you believe, uh, not what you were taught. And that's the biggest thing for me is to let people know that what everyone is saying is not the populace. Your teacher, when you were in school that told you you were no good, if you still hear that voice, that's her mm. opinion. You can go against mm. it not who you are. You can be better than that. You know, the woman that is on welfare with 10 kids and believes she can't rise above, you can. You will need some assistance that is sincere, but you've got to check in and find out who it is. It's some of us here that actually help people because I don't believe that 10, 10 children, that, that a woman could actually do that by herself. You need help. And it's not for a person to stay dependent. It's for you to, to know that you are celebrated regardless of any kind of problems and mistakes mm -hmm. on the conversation. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want someone to go on and say the things that were said about George, about my children. I have three sons. All of this hits home. Mm -hmm. But in that, having three sons, I educated them on the issues when they were younger. 
So moving forward, we have three other young women here that are passionate and we want to kind of like bring this back again, not on Candace. We said what we have to say. Yeah, we, we're done with that. To give her her, her kudos and that she's a powerful speaker, she but is. it's like you're speaking to uh, people that believe what you're saying, but there's some that don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And we don't really care about judging people when everybody makes mistakes. So um, next Friday, the 12th at 2 o'clock Pacific time, we're going to be doing a class on the history of Taurus. And so we have people that are already signed up. Um, when you're part of your personal development um, sessions, which I give and some of my other constituents, what we do is help you in these issues to help you see who you are, and that means that you do have to look at deprogramming so that you can come into your own programming for purpose. So the class on Taurus will educate uh, everyone on history of Taurus because it says a lot. There was a crossover with the history of Taurus from the feminine um, uh, aspect, and so the patriarch came there. We have some, some history that is uh, taking place right now, even with the energies that's speaking to a lot of people concerning Taurus. And so if you want to get in on that class, it will be $45 for you to start. You can also, you know, sign up for personal development classes. Um, uh, maybe in, uh, well, yeah, Kamoy will be on there with me, but then we'll have some other personal development coaches. And that will help you to, uh, if you're looking for, get yourself positioned to, rise up in this time and season because this is a liberating energy that we're in. That's why you see the, the, uh, the rioting. People want freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, the revolutionary energy is, is, is coming up. And that revolutionary energy has to do with the planetary um, uh, positioning. And yes, yeah, some people have been taught against that. And so we'll talk about that another time. But um, mm -hmm. those that understood or were called to understand it what they're doing is teaching the people that there is a time and a season for everything. And so this young man, his death, it counteracted, it provoked the time. Whereas many of the others did not mm -hmm. because it was a building mm -hmm. up, all mm -hmm. right? So how can you become a part of the class when I put it in YouTube? The information will be there. And on Facebook, I am a woman of power. It will be there. Um, the cash app for $45 for the class. The class is an hour long. And again, it's from um, 2 o'clock to 3 uh, on the 12th of June. We'll be discussing um, a lot of the energies that are going on in the retrograde. You guys have anything to say before we leave? Only that uh, the revolution will be televised. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. 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 And to take the time out and to study thyself approved. Don't just take someone's word on social media. Social media is not your friend right now. The news is not your yeah. friend right now. Study for yourself. Learn for yourself. Research for yourself. All right, so we'll see you guys next week. Um, and then, you know, be a part of our class on the 12th of June at 2 o'clock next week. You'll learn a wealth of information that will change your life. Have a wonderful day.